Next one is Cam. Uh, and uh, this one here is a really good Cam one, I think. Uh, this from Grace Jan. Grace Jan, I think. Sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, Grace Jan sent me a, uh, and also sent me a picture. Um, so let's look at this file here. Um, this is actually an interesting one that I think that many people would uh, would agree with. Could be a little. Uh... So what Great Chan has is he has this model here. He has a 10 degree chamfer on the part. Then he has two openings. And if you look, you can kind of see how the 3D tool pad is rolling over uh, everything. And he really just wants he really just wants this 10 degree chamfer to be done with a ball and mill. Uh, I don't blame you. I want to show, I'm going to take the opportunity to go a little bit further and show a couple of different things with this, I think. Um, so let's start out by modeling up uh, Great John's, I hope that's if you pronounce your names, uh, profile. So I'm going to open up inside uh, Fusion. Let's do a line up here. I don't know how big we're going to make this. I don't know. I, so I have no idea how big your model is. <laughs> um 50 probably fits out let's get that um 10 degrees in there let's what am i trying to do here modeling up on the fly let's make sure that this is 10 degrees 10 degrees and uh i'm just gonna throw some dimensions on this one just so it gets fully defined here okay let's extrude down um on the part here goes down like that and then um there was a couple of openings that kind of like are in the way so let's do those p for projects so like this edge here and i'm just going to throw in a couple of rectangles to simulate a little bit what um what we have here all right so we have this here now if we go in and we just really want to take a ball end mill and we just want to machine this 10 degrees with a ball end mill. But uh, what happens in CAM is we go into manufacturer and we go in and let's create a, um, a Z setup. And I'm fine with this. I'm not going to mess with that. Um, I would probably use a um, probably use a parallel cut for this. And let's go in and select a cutter. Now, if you're following uh, my videos, you know that I always talk about um, that whenever you're doing three axis tool pass, select a little bit bigger color than that. What's the bigger we have? A 10? Okay. Um, that whenever we are doing a three axis tool path, don't do any other settings. So select your tool, hit OK, and let's see what we get. Okay, that is nothing near what we want, but I want to walk through this and show a couple of different ways on how we can do this because that's where I think people learn most when they see me kind of like how I troubleshoot. So the first thing I noticed is I definitely want this toolpath to go up and down. Um, that was what uh, Great Sean also had. So I'm going to right click and hit edit and I'm going to go in and, and notice how I'm going to try just to make, I'm going to go to the passes tab and I'm going to change this to 90 degrees. I'm really just going to try to make changes one at the time uh, so now this one is going in the right direction um, but we can see that it's machining uh, the top now Grochan, Grochan, whatever you pronounce your name talked about how you can use the void surfaces and things like that but that and, and to Grochan's um, uh, email is actually not what I prefer to do so you have a void control and I agree with Grochan on that there is a cool feature in here that you maybe don't know about if you go in and edit, and that is you can actually control slopes under the geometry. So you will see right now it machines everything between 90 and zero. So in a crazy fashion, if I go in here and I say 1%, or 1 degree, and hit OK, now you will see that we just eliminated absolutely everything uh, that is um, that is uh, flat because we put that one degree. Now you notice that it actually also traces a tool path around over here on on the edges. Um, and you might ask yourself that could possibly be um, because that it does see that as a ninety degrees. Let's go in and 
and edit this one just for the heck of it and let's make this one 89 and see what happens then. That doesn't change this. So this overlay here is probably just uh, a transition because of machining over that. Now you've also noticed that if I go in here and I simulate this, go to the side view, if we simulate this, and I might actually I'll bring to, I don't know if my cutter is long enough to get down there. Uh, but if I go in here and I simulate this, that it only machines to about there. Why is this only machining just to rare? That is actually, I'm going to leave it right here for now. If we go in and edit this tool path again, it's because if we go to the boundary conditions, we have it set here to tool command to tool center of the boundary and the boundary is the silhouette. Now silhouette is literally like if you flash a, a flashlight down from the top of the part, what we're looking at right now, because that's our Z direction, the silhouette here, um, it's, it's seeing that silhouette boundary and then we are telling it that the tool cannot go past that with the center. See how it says tool center boundary? Um, so the tool can actually not go past this boundary right now and that's why okay again from the side that if i go in to uh, hit the simulate button that that tool will not go over that now we can override that with one command in there and then this one contact boundary now i just talked about in a previous video uh section here about uh mike mataris uh pop-outs uh coming out here but we're going to select this uh here and now when I hit OK, now notice that now the tool path will absolutely go all the way down to the ads because it overrides it. Because now when we go in and simulate this, coming down here is that now it will be tangent to this machining ads and it would actually come down to be tangent with it. And we are getting closer uh, in here to what we actually want right now. Now, one thing that you will see it did was a machine on the back side because it still kind of sees these work here. So now we could go in and do actually a boundary selection. Um, and a boundary selection on this part would be to go in and say selection. And then I'm going to select this edge, but it selects as the weird X. I'm going to reselect it. And now we could actually walk around and just select the boundary that we want. Boom. And hit the little green check mark there. And now you will see that it's not going to machine uh, on the back side. It is now contained within, uh, within this. And this is what this is actually not really what Great John want, but this is how you would machine and get this tool path the way you want with the openings. Because what Great John actually says in his email, you had no way to know this, <laughs> is that um, he actually just want to machine this whole phase and don't and was going to put in these pockets afterwards. Okay, so a couple of different ways you could do that. Wow, I'm throwing so much stuff here, uh, but I wanted to show how you could do this if this is the model you get. This would be the right tool path for machining this. Now, if you're putting in the pockets afterwards, one way to do this would be go to back to the design, of course. We could just roll back to where this does not happen, right? And then we could go back into the manufacturer and let's just apply a new parallel tool path, same cutter. We know that, um, that we want it to be 90 degrees we know that we want to put the slope in here, one degree here, 80, whoops, 89 here, and uh, contact boundary. Let's try to hit OK. And then we get pretty much the same perfect tool pad there. Now it does go on the outside there. So let's go back in and do the selection. And I'm really just going to select, oops, selection, select it again. And I'm literally just going to select these boundaries. 
there hit the green check mark so there you go on that uh go john and the last option just to that i think i've covered just about all i can think of in uh in two seconds you could also if you wanted to to machine this face while you didn't have this rolled back you could go into the service tool path you could go in and hit offset you could select this face don't put any offset distance in. just hit enter now that would have given you a surface body let's roll all the way back to the end here you have that surface body there go back into manufacture and then in your setup you could exit out of this just select that surface and now uh, when you go in to do your um, your parallel cuts it will only see that surface again we have to change the pass uh, direction here to 90 and i can't remember what else we would need to have to change uh edit that so this is probably the fastest way to do this and boom now you have that same tool pad. so a lot of different ways to get this this should be good for a uh, a cam friday a lot of different options to receive the same result but hopefully you saw you saw three different things hopefully this was useful thumbs down if not comments yeah a good uh, a good way to do that subscribe if you haven't subscribed i hope this is useful let's move on